this party started uh, this is a video of me making the lock nut on a um, little flip peep uh, it's being made for an HW30 that I'm building it's got a, a custom shroud uh, with a little Lyman uh, it was a MJT front sight anyway uh, uh, it's got a little detent built into the peep sight, and when it's in the full vertical position, uh, I just you know, the detent will hold it, but uh, the lock nut locks it down where it can't get any wiggle. You know. Uh, anyway, this is a 4140 uh, annealed, and uh, I've got to make it where it will. Uh, made up to the side of the uh, peep sight and have a slight recess so uh, it can uh, the, the shaft that goes through the uh, toggle uh, can kind of recess into it it allows it to pull it into the side of it and then it's uh, bearing down on the outer jaws of the peep uh, you'll see pictures at the end that'll kind of give you an idea Before I was doing this, I uh, had made the rest of the uh, parts for the peep, and I didn't get any video footage. I'll, I got to make more. Um, I've got to make about four or five more, and uh, I'll probably go ahead and shoot all the different. Uh, me making each individual component for the peep site. I guess this will, this will be part one. Uh, I was in a rush to get the other stuff made for the uh, first one. And then uh, some other stuff didn't uh, get completed in time. So I just kind of backburned it until I could get back on it. And I'm just now getting back on it. I never really know how much to uh, really edit out of all these uh, videos. I mean, I could make them very quick, or I mean, just a couple of quick shots. And, you know, but to some degree, I kind of want to get an idea. Of, you know, you know, if somebody's watching the video wanting to learn how to make something, that's that's fine. Uh, I could probably do that a lot quicker, but the, the guys are just looking at this and don't have any idea how long it takes to, uh, you know, make little pieces and parts. Um, you know, when you're making all this stuff going off like this, it's like a lot of this stuff I'm just, a lot, some of it I'll sketch it out because there's certain things that you have to be very precise about but this like this little lock nut it's I just kind of look at what it's mating up to and I uh, just kind of ballpark 95, it 85, 75, 65 anyway, I'm just trying to get it down to 260 Put up a picture of something you made, and, and there's you know nobody has any concept of you know, how long it takes to make stuff.
I think the last thing I did before I started making this part was the uh, the actual eyepiece, the aperture. Uh, pretty sure I, yeah, I could. I'm not getting in a huge hurry, but I'm not being a slouch about it either. But you know, I probably spent about an hour and 45 minutes just making the uh, eyepiece. Uh, You know, after I actually make the part and everything, I have to heat treat it, I have to fire up the oven. I didn't take any uh, footage of the heat treat oven because it's, it's not like you're sitting there doing anything. You load the part in the oven and you know, let it ramp up to town and then uh, quench it. And I usually go back in after uh, after the quench and everything, and I'll anneal it. I typically go about 550, 600 degrees on that needle, and it gives it a, it's already kind of dark, almost kind of like a color case. Uh, once you uh, do the initial heat treat, five feet, about 600 degrees, uh, add a, a blue contrast to it. If it were just shiny steel, it would look like a real, kind of iridescent blue but when you're doing it on top of the case if you don't polish in between doing it it just comes out with a nice uh, dark blue almost look blue just a little bit of a, uh, enough of a contrasting colors in there to make it look unique These are a uh, 40 line per inch knurl. Um, I, like I said, I had just done the uh, the eyepiece for it uh, before. Uh, these knurls aren't really good for uh, like feeding across the face. They have a sharp edge. Uh, I think I've got a very, very slight offset on that tool holder it gives me uh, I think about one one degree so it'll kind of knurl towards the uh, back side so it uh, it acts like it's got a slightly chamfered edge it feeds in and uh, what I'm doing here is uh, just looking to see if um, if the pattern is laying down right um, it's just like cutting gears uh, 40 lines per inch. You, you can sit down and do the math if it's critical on the dimensions you're trying to keep. But most of the times when I do a knurl, I just look and see if you know the everything's lining up and the knurls have to make a complete turn. They're laying back into the same grooves. If they aren't, to, I just skim five thousandths off. Hit it again. If that doesn't do it, get you know another five thousandths and. Um, Eventually, you know, usually within five or ten thousandths on a 40 line per inch, it'll start laying back in because it, you know, you, you go in and out of um, where the Demetrio layout would be uh, fairly quickly on 40 line per inch. So, you know, you just hit it, hit it and lay. I do that on. Uh, just about any knurl that I do, whether it's a heavy coarse knurl or a fine knurl, you can usually just cut ten, five to ten thousandths and get them to line up. And it's like you can just cram it in, but it, I, I know a lot of guys say they do that, they just cram it in until the knurl looks good, but uh, it just is pretty effortless uh, once you get everything lined up where it's laying in like it's supposed to be it'll, uh, it'll just lay in there anyway i keep it wet and I keep a little blue tie on any uh, 
chips or anything that starts kind of coming loose when you're forcing them on. on, on. Just kind of wipe it off. Keep flushing it out and wiping it off. I use the same knurls when I do peak sites. It's uh, 40, 40 line per inch. It's a real fine line. Uh, on really small parts like this, uh, coarse knurls don't work really. They don't, don't to me anyway. I just think they look a lot sharper if they have a real fine knurl on them. I'm not running super fast when I'm doing it. I think I'm about 350 RPM right here. I'm going to cut the chaffers on it. Uh, I have some chaffer bit that last tool holder I had on there before I started knurling. I've got it set up real. Uh, cut a real uh, wide, narrow. Uh, chamfer if you feed in to the face it's real narrow and short if it's uh, fed in from the side and you'll see me when I'm flipping it around or anything uh, when you feed straight into the face it's almost like a form tool you're getting uh, the bits about five sixteenths it's half of the five sixteenths I'll slow it way down so it'll give me a good finish and I can just feed straight in on a lot of stuff where I, I have, I've got a couple extra bits if I ever have to make a fairly short taper uh, I'll just grind a bit with the taper I need into it you know and just feed straight in and uh, run the lathe about 80 rpm or something like that that's what I'll do when I make muzzle brakes if it has a short taper Long taper, I'll go ahead and use the compound on it. I think I'm getting pretty close right here. Again, just kind of after I knurl, it's uh, just kind of barely touch the edge. Catch that last knurl on the edge and put a little chamfer. All right, uh, like I said, uh, the shaft that goes through the toggle is 5 millimeter. Uh, and it's got a 3 millimeter point five hole through the center of it, so the way this lock nut attaches is I've got a little three millimeter bolt that goes down through the center of it, passes through, and uh, I'll make it go the head of the screw locks in. I'll probably put a little Loctite on it, you know, when I'm done, but I got a drilling tap it. I'm just center drilling, getting ready to drill and tap it. I think everybody's seen that sign where 
looks like a graph and it's like zero to a hundred percent of the time you spend in your shop and it's like eighty percent of it is looking looking for tools well that's you know, this video would be an hour and a half long if uh, I didn't edit out all the wandering around I think I spent about 30 minutes just looking for the 30 millimeter tap I've got it in its own tap wrench and um, I wandered around the shop for a half hour and finally found it sitting on top of the load. You know, I edited, I did edit all that out. This little spring-loaded center to keep the taps straight. I just kick it into neutral and do it by hand. I don't know if I mentioned it in other videos. I really, I really enjoy using this lathe. Um, you can see that I've got a 17-inch lathe. It's a, it's a little more rigid than this little 13-inch that I got, but um, and it's got a. DRO on it on the other leg. This one I, uh, uh, you know, I, I started working uh, running lathe back in the 70s and uh, first. On this, I've always been used to just using hand dials. I use a little dial indicator on the carriage uh, if I think I'm going to move and need to come back to a spot or get a very precise depth with the carriage on something that I'm making. But um, on this little lathe here, I can, uh, with the compound set the way it is and everything, I can accurately cut, you know, tents uh, if I have to. A uh, half thousand is very easy. If I need to uh, sneak up on something and trim a half thou off, I can. Uh, just with the dials, hand dials. Uh, the other lathe, the it's a Acer seventeen forty. It's like you have to use the DRO on it. The um, it just kind of floats a little bit. I don't know why that is, but the dial from there will repeat. I'm just using a little high speed bit here to do a little slight countersink that will allow um, this nut to go over the shaft. If the shaft pulls through slightly, uh, it also gives a little bit of a ring for it to uh, kind of bite into the side of the housing on the body of the peat. Yeah, now you'll see, I'll throw an indicator up there just so. Every time I use a cutoff tool, I, I'll throw that uh, indicator up on the carriage. So if I do want to come back and chamfer after I get a little bit of depth on the cut, I can uh, just come. I can throw that back on and come right back to where I was. Uh, I didn't really do it here because I was going to turn it around. And, um, 
like I said, use that chamfer tool to um, act more like a form tool, get a wide chamfer on it. It's almost like cutting a taper on it, but just a, uh, with just a bit. This lay parts off really, really well. Most of the time I just use the power feed and just hit the hand and go. Keep it wet, you can just kind of listen to where the chips come off. They make a certain noise. You just sound real crispy. I was thinking about what I was going to stop there and uh, swap out the holding chair for the edge of it but I just decided to get finish better off of it. Like I said, I've already drilled at 3 millimeter point five. Uh, I've got a bolt that's going to pass and through it. A total of 412. Uh, from the other side, so um, I want to drill down. Leave some threads in there for the uh, for the bolt to lock into when I thread it down into it from the other side. But I want it to. Uh, enough threads of the bolt to pass through to where it op you know where to thread into the pivot bolt on the and I just flip it around use my chamfer bit it operates at two different heights on the, uh, even though it's all the same level I have to I typically uh, loosen it up and just kind of position it close to center by eye when I'm coming up on the face of something. That's what I'm doing right there. I made all these uh, tool holders Individually made to hold whatever size bit, so there, there's no um, you can get right up against the chuck with the bit. You know, it, there's no uh, you're not running your tool holders up against the jaws while it's running. Now lock in. I think these are five sixteenths. Uh, once I get everything back together, I'm going to hard and jaw. Have to regrind all the bits, make new two holders for it. It's got an AXA post on it. I'll make all new holders for it and then regrind all the bits for cutting chamfers and stuff. Absolutely. Sure. It was 410. Uh, it's like 37,000. thick. And we had a... Tempted of... I wanted to uh, drill and leave about 70 thousandths. Um, you know, down in uh, at the bottom of the hole for the bolt to thread into, and I had 373, so I wanted to go 300 in, leave 73 thousandths. 
Thirty-seven thousand. The um, tailstock on my lathe is uh, eight threads per inch. Most of the time, when I'm drilling a hole, uh, thirty-seven from. I just count turns. Thirty from. You know, one turn of an eight thread per inch uh, will give you eighth inch. Two turns is a quarter. Two and slightly less. Then a, a half yes, a turn, I uh, get pretty yeah, close to three uh, left over, so to three hundred seventy-three. I really wish the lathe had a, a ten, leave. ten thread per inch uh, lead screw in it. Uh, most of the lathes, even the Hardage has a ten, I believe. Uh, it's got a hundred thousands, but eighth inch. I don't know why. It just always messes me up 125. Uh, it's, you know, if it was 10 thread per inch, you go 100 per revolution. It's real easy to hit 300 or 350 or 325. It's just, you know, it's almost uh, like being metric. I just, uh, total depth. I can still do it with uh, 8 threads per inch, figuring an eighth inch, you know, two of them's a quarter. And, Eight threads per inch on the I would just prefer it had ten if I ever do um from the time the flute anything with the tail stock on this lathe I may just make another where I want them to be. Um, right there. Another lead screw in it and go ten threads per inch as opposed to um, to eight. Anyway, I tried to hit close to 300. As long as I don't go too far, it'll be okay. Uh, I just need to uh, make sure I have enough threads going through. I don't drill all the threads out. And, uh, after I drill, I just chamfer the hole. Facing it off, little tiny part like this, I'd like to get the speed up. Give me a nice finish. Anyway, um, I just about wrap up making the part. Here's some uh, pictures of the uh, finished peep site. That's the little piece after I've heat treated it, and you can kind of see the bolt down in it. And all the lock adjustments. I, you just loosen up the eyepiece on this to slide it up and down, and and it's got a little. Uh, I made the uh, detent in it out of I think it's O1, and I mill a couple uh, little small slots for the. Uh, detent to uh, lock in. You can see them right there. The threads on that are like, I think they're 7 millimeter, 0 0.75, 0 0.75. It's the same as the uh, pivot bolt, barrel pivot bolt. 
Anyway, I just make that. It's a six millimeter head on it, and it fits down in the uh, in the holes on top of the receiver. And I've got that dovetail right there machined to where it's an absolute perfect fit across the uh, dovetails on the back of an HW30. Anyway, it's all polished up and blued. And yeah, I had it locked right there. I couldn't fold it down. That's it. That's what it looks like folded down. And Flip it up. Thanks for looking.